Section 35 of The Aesop for Children. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jackie Horn. The Aesop for Children by Aesop. The Lion, the Ass, and the Fox. A lion, an ass, and a fox were hunting in company and caught a large quantity of game. The ass was asked to divide the spoil. This he did very fairly, giving each an equal share. The fox was well satisfied, but the lion flew into a great rage over it, and with one stroke of his huge paw he added the ass to the pile of slain. Then he turned to the fox. You divide it, he roared angrily. The fox wasted no time in talking. He quickly piled all the game into one great heap. From this he took a very small portion for himself, such undesirable bits as the horns and hooves of a mountain goat, and the end of an ox tail. The lion now recovered his good humor entirely. "'Who taught you to divide so fairly?' he asked pleasantly. "'I learned a lesson from the ass,' replied the fox, carefully edging away. "'Learn from the misfortunes of others.' THE LION'S SHARE A long time ago, the lion, the fox, the jackal, and the wolf agreed to go hunting together, sharing with each other whatever they found. One day, the wolf ran down a stag and immediately called his comrades to divide the spoil. Without being asked, the lion placed himself at the head of the feast to do the carving, and, with a great show of fairness, began to count the guests. One, he said, counting on his claws, that is myself the lion, Two, that's the wolf, three is the jackal, and the fox makes four. He then very carefully divided the stag into four equal parts. I am King Lion, he said when he had finished, so of course I get the first part. The next part falls to me because I am the strongest, and this is mine because I am the bravest. He now began to glare at the others very savagely. If any of you have any claim to the part that is left, he growled, stretching his claws meaningly, now is the time to speak up. Might makes right. The Mole and His Mother A little mole once said to his mother, Why, mother, you said I was blind, but I am sure I can see. Mother Mole saw she would have to get such conceit out of his head. So she put a bit of frankincense before him and asked him to tell what it was. The little mole peered at it. Why, that's a pebble! Well, my son, that proves you've lost your sense of smell as well as being blind. Boast of one thing, and you will be found lacking in that and a few other things as well. The North Wind and the Sun the North Wind and the Sun had a quarrel about which of them was the stronger. While they were disputing with much heat and bluster, a traveler passed along the road wrapped in a cloak. Let us agree, said the Sun, that he is the stronger who can strip that traveler of his cloak. Very well, growled the North Wind, and at once he sent a cold, howling blast against the traveler. With the first gust of the wind, the ends of the cloak whipped about the traveler's body but he immediately wrapped it closely around him, and the harder the wind blew, the tighter he held it to him. The north wind tore angrily at the cloak, but all his efforts were in vain. Then the sun began to shine. At first his beams were gentle, and in the pleasant warmth after the bitter cold of the north wind, the traveler unfastened his cloak and let it hang loosely from his shoulders. The sun's rays grew warmer and warmer. The man took off his cap and mopped his brow. At last he became so heated that he pulled off his cloak and, to escape the blazing sunshine, threw himself down in the welcome shade of a tree by the roadside. Gentleness and kind persuasion win where force and bluster fail. End of section 35 Recording by Jackie Horn, Laytonsville, Maryland